I think so. Trying to figure out why Mr. Will is putting that thing <laughs> in her face. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Um, and he is a Paton de Tulier. Some people say that with more accent. Whatever you want to call them, that's, this is her breed. Um, most groomers just refer to them as a Catan. Um, they have a very cottony, very fluffy coat. Um, when they show them, they grow them to the floor like a Maltese. Um, but obviously, we're not going to do that with her because she's, she's just a happy little pet. Yes, she is. And so she gets a uh, what some people refer to as a teddy bear cut. Um, but she gets the same length all over on her body because she has a little bit of a um, she's got a, a growth plate deformity in this leg here. So I try not to make her stand as much as possible. I don't know if you can see it, but. Her, oh, yeah. her front toe is over here. So we try to fix that when I, a little bit when I scissor her feet. Um, but she gets a C comb all over. And then, I don't know if some of your clients ever asked for this or not, but when she goes outside in the morning, she gets wet underneath here. So um, they request that I do that shorter underneath her chest and her belly. And so I do a... Um, a two comb under there and so that's what I generally do first just take the whole belly off with the two comb all the way up into in her case, into her armpits because, um, again, she has that birth plate issue, particularly on this leg, and so it makes her um, armpits rub more, and she gets knots up in there if I don't. And I just scoop it out with the two comb, and that keeps it short enough that she's on a monthly schedule that she can have a little fuzz in her armpits, but it doesn't get matted. And basically just take off her whole belly all the way up, midway up to her chest, like basically even with her front legs. And this is what we call shelling out. I've got a couple of lots of opsos in full coat that I do it with a 30 blade. Because they're boys and she doesn't want them peeing on all their hair. So um, it gets really short. So the length is kind of subjective. Um, and then I do a two on her rear angulation. But with the, sh the shelling out um, underneath the belly like that, the length is kind of subjective. Um, you know, if you've got a lot of hair to cover it up, you can make that really short, especially with the boys when they go, they go pee pee right there. And I also take a two comb underneath her little cheek. I take a two comb underneath her chin right here, kind of like you do with the bichon. I don't know if we've done a bichon yet, but in like, just like a little U-shape, like right underneath the um, jawbone. And that um, helps separate their head from their body and, and give them a little bit, a little bit more neck when you do the, when you do the body. And then I just skim off the bottom of her beard like that because it saves me some scissor time. And the clipper back is awesome for that. So that was a two, number two comb with the clipper back. So if you don't have a clipper back, you can try, you could do it with a four or a five even. And then this is a C comb. Why is that? Uh, the clipper back makes it shorter. It sucks and it sucks in. the hair just a little bit and makes it shorter. Okay. So you have to kind of adjust for what I'm saying when I use the clipper back. And you can, if you don't have a clipper back, then you probably want to go one length shorter with um, what you're doing because the clipper back does suck the hair up a little bit. It doesn't make it a huge amount shorter, but it definitely does make it shorter. And I just let her sit. Um, as much as I possibly can, um, 
because of this leg, you can actually see it a little better from the front there. This is her, this is her front toe way over here. I can actually see the leg bows oh, yeah. and goes like that. Yeah. So I let her sit and as much as I possibly can so she doesn't have to lean on that leg. And then like I said, I just take the sea comb to everything. And that way there's um, there's less scissoring that I have to make her stand for. And then you can see where I took that armpit out with the two, it's a little shorter in there. And just don't worry about that. It makes, it, it makes her comfortable and it makes her happy. You don't have to pull knots out of her armpits or shave them too. And this leg isn't bad at all. Just that one front one. I need to oil those clippers. So what about the clippers? I need to oil them. It sounds like it's probably the blade. Oh. That's what happens when you miss a little tangle. Find a little tangle like that and you're using the clipper combs, don't leave it. Because it'll snag your comb off and then you'll be taking a 15 or a 30 or whatever you have underneath there to that dog. Pull that comb right off. Not only that, but it leaves like a weird chunky little spot. Or it pulls it a little bit more. Right. And then you have to fix it. So, she gets a seat comb all over, we talked about, oh, about the clipper back if it saves time, um, yeah, I think it saves tons of time. That and bathing the dog first. We were never taught to do that back in grooming school. We were just taught, you know, you just you rough them in first and then you bathe them, and you know that's that's two haircuts. And if you have a clipper vet, for sure, that's not necessary. Um, we got a lot of really good regular customers like I do. Even you know, I just I throw them right in the bathtub. Except for some of the poodles, if they really don't like their face blow dried. Because um, I'm mobile and I have to blow dry, um, I'll shave their little face first before I put them in the tub. Yep, that's my cold one. Alright. Um, I put them right in the bathtub first. Get them bathed and blow dried and get them all nice and clean. Number one, you're saving your tools because dirty hair and tools don't don't go well together. Since I started doing that, I probably send my blades out like maybe once a year. And my same thing with my scissors. Um, I used to have to always constantly getting stuff sharpened and um, fixed and whatnot, and it's because I was cutting dirty hair all the time. So, I've at least cut my sharpening expenses in half, and since I started using the clipper back and bathing first, I've probably cut my uh, grooming time by at least a third per dog. And I know that now that I'm mobile. I never knew that in my shop. I knew I was able to do a few more dogs, but now that I'm mobile, I know exactly how long it takes me. So this is still the sea comb. And they like her whole face kind of short, so I take off her whole side like this. And I hold her ear gently out of the way so I don't suck up all her ear hair. Just want to blend the top. 
And that's the other thing about the clipper back is you can do that. I'm not even actually touching her head. I'm just skimming the hair off. Not even actually touching her skin. This seems to go pretty good for uh, a lot of dogs that don't like their head done either. The clipper vac seems to, they either hate it because of the noise or like it's, it's better because you don't actually have to touch their face. They don't like their face being touched for some reason. And the other thing is, is don't panic, especially when you have a big comb like this on. There's no way her tongue can get all the way into my cutter. So if you just saw her stick her tongue out, don't panic. Now, if that was like a five or a seven blade, yeah, I'd have, I'd have been a little more concerned and I would have had her mouth closed tighter. But since it's a big long comb like this, I don't generally worry about it too much because there's really no way for her to get her tongue in between all of that and all the way over here to my cutter. So I don't generally worry about it. With a blade or a shorter comb, then yeah, you'll want to make sure you keep their mouth closed really good with your fingers. Shake it off, girlfriend! Yeah! And so now I'm just going to finish up her really quick little scissor work with my curved shears and my thinners. Come back, Lee. Come back. Come back, Miss Annie. You're fine. I know he's looking at you. Yeah. He's looking at you. Yeah, he is. Yes. Okay. So I like my thinners around her face because I think it makes it look a lot softer. And I can also get more hair from by her eyes and out of her eyes without making it look just chopped off. See how it looks nice and natural, but there's a nice straight line, but it's not just like exactly straight and chopped off. That's what I like. It's my little preference. It looks real natural. And a lot of my clients like it too, so... And I also, probably about every other grooming, I come in here and I clip around her eyes, just like we do on a Bichon to keep that um, longer stuff out of her face because they don't like that in her eyes. And then as you can see, she's had some little issues with cherry eye. This one came back. Um, they had surgery for, I think, two other ones. This one stayed away, but this one kind of shows up and it pops out a little bit more when she gets stressed, which luckily she isn't right now because she usually does pretty good. I'll just trim underneath here. And then soften that up too. Just follow it all the way around back to the ear. If you're worried about the ear, just go like that and kind of hold it with your finger. Don't pull it all the way, just hold the edge of it with your finger. And just come right around in front of the ears and I take all this stuff off. If you want to save some time, you can do it with your straights or your curves and then soften it like that. And then I blend this little edge in where I took that two comb into her neck. So it looks like it blends into the little bit longer stuff. And it's nice uh, to be able to use thinners on some of these, this real fluffy cottony coat like this. Um, this and Yorkies and that, because um, it seems to be able to, you can grab the hair and trim it without making crazy lines. soften the edges with my thinners. 
Good girl, Emmy. And I don't ever like all this stuff sticking out from underneath the ears. It just prevents airflow. Just fluff it all up now and see what we find sticking outy. Looks a little bulkier. Take a little bit of that off. Okay, and then they like her ears a little bit long. So I do just like I do with most of these ears, it's just a matter of length. Cut a little bit off with either my curves or my straights. That's just depending on what your customer wants. And then I can just come back and I soften the edges with my thinning shears. Straights. Don't cut yourself. I almost just did. Better me than the dog. I could feel the tip of the scissors go ching. I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> How many of those have you got? Oh, a million. <laughs> Feels like a million. Probably, you know, a hundred or so over the years. Yeah, and you just soften the edge that you already cut. And you can make those uh, rounder or straighter or there she is. What do you do? Yeah. Well, don't be nervous now. Okay. So there's her cute little face. So Mr. Will. Like you. Look at you. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Awesome job. And then really all we have to do is just round up her little feet and then I trim this front leg. Let me turn her this way. And then you can see the spot that I took out up here, it's kind of short. I just trim this front leg, just kind of blend it down in a little bit. So that her leg looks more straight. So if you just go straight up and down and don't worry about where the actual leg is, you can make it look like the leg is straighter. And you can make it look like her nails are up here in the front. That's a little bit of corrective grooming. This will end up being really, really, really tight to her foot over here because that's actually her front nail right here. Then they go back down this side. Yeah. So it looks like she has a nice little column leg even though she really doesn't. That's one of the things that you can do if you're leaving enough hair. You know, I mean, some of these, some of these guys want a five or a seven or whatever. You know, you really can't Get it. do any camouflage when there's no hair. But if you're, you know, if you're scissoring or you're getting, you know, with dogs like this that can have a little bit more coat on them, then you can. You can use that to to camouflage that foot.
and even though I cut that armpit out, it still is almost even with the inside of that leg because of how I trimmed it so it blended right in. What's he doing? <laughs> you can see it basically just blended in with the rest of the leg. Even though it was done shorter to keep the mats and stuff out. blend this in here from the C to the 2 which is basically just tr like trimming the underline so that there's not an edge that sticks out there when she grows because remember we did the 2 comb under her belly so we're just blending this little bit of side in just a little bit around the edge so that way when it grows out it doesn't go and stick out and then she's got a naked belly well it's not really naked but it's shorter on it and you're not struggling. Always try to think of what you can do to get that dog to do what you want without fighting with them. Granted, there are some dogs that are difficult. Not Miss Emmy. There are some dogs that are difficult that you, you know, kind of have to fight with a little bit to get things done. But if it's just something like they don't want to stand on a foot or they don't want one particular thing messed with or whatever, just try to try to stop and think, what can I do in that case, the foot, what can I do to get this dog to do what I want without struggling? Because the more you struggle with them, harder it is in the long run to get them groomed because they're just going to fight back. So if you can be just a little bit smarter and figure out what to do rather than fight or pull or struggle, your life and the dog's life is a whole lot easier. And see, she's not bad about her back legs at all because her back legs are fine. It's just that, that front foot. <laughs> she can't help it. But you can see literally like her elbow is over here. Instead of back here. It kind of, when she rests, she pokes it out. Yeah. And then I blend the rear angulation a little bit. Remember we took a two back there. Just blend that part into her thigh a little. So it's, not, again, so it's not sticking out from the little bit longer parts. I'm just trimming behind the back of her pad here because you don't want any of this stuff laying on the ground. And sometimes when they relax and stand normally, they put those pasterns down. Alright, let me blend this over here on this side. Turn this little foot. I 
always go around the outside, not across. And that's for all you professional groomers too. I'll tell you how many times I've accidentally nicked a pad, not paying attention. Going across the pad of the foot. That pad sticks up. Okay, and I'm really just tidying anything that just sticks out and says I don't want to be seen above the rest of them. I'm going to trim our tail a little bit. I don't like it to be too crazy long. So we'll start this again. Hey, we're almost done. Mm -hmm. Hang on. Chill out, girl. Okay. So after we cut the end, and I just kind of let the hair part, and I hold the tail up like this. And then I just kind of follow it straight down and take all of that stuff off. And then right here, so that way, when she goes potty, we don't get the poops too stuck to the tail. So you're shortening the bottom. That's right, right there. just right here by the booty hole. Okay. You see, then you still have a nice shape to your tail, but it's a little bit shorter right there. So when they do this number and go to the bathroom, there's no hair get stuck. Okay, and that's it. That's Miss Emmy.